The situation is that in the barns are some old swallow nests. If we have swallows nesting in the barns, then it means between the end of March and the beginning of August, we can't actually do anything to the roof in the barns. So we need to do something to the roof. We need to take the roofs off. My friend Paul happens to be an ornithologist and he came for a day and we bird proofed the barns. And then me and Lewis built some bird boxes out of some old cow bed bits and pieces that we found. So yeah, stick around to the end to see the bird boxes. They're really cool. Um, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon and uh, yeah, I'll show you how we bird proofed the barns. So here I am trudging through the melting snow. It was getting a bit warmer, kind of weird, weirdly nice, but also just damp and rough. There's Paul and Lewis assessing the situation. So we started at the end of what's going to be the kitchen block with those two windows upstairs, just basically putting chicken wire in because apparently swallows need to fly straight in to something. They don't land and then crawl in. They, they need to fly straight through an opening. So it's not too difficult actually, because I mean, I don't think we're gonna be able to stop things crawling in. There's like holes all over the place, but these are the, the big main holes. Yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. Then we moved through into the uh, yeah. kind of middle barn upstairs, the hayloft as we've been calling it. And there are a lot of these kind of vent boxes things, which I guess were to kind of vent the dairy below because there's a, there's a hole below. And uh, yeah, this kind of vent thing. Look, there's a, there's a bird's nest inside. Like I said, we did build some bird boxes and I'm gonna build even more bird boxes next time I go. And I'm gonna get some of those little fake swallow nest things to put somewhere, hopefully that they will like. So we dismantled all these old vent things and uh, yeah, assessed the situation again. having a look through. There's me leaving the frame. Right, so yeah, measured the little squares. I mean, this is pretty like obvious, <laughs> basic stuff. Maybe quite relaxing for you to watch people bird proofing a barn. Just taking it easy, getting our hats covered in old straw and dust and rat fur and all the other things that are in there. That's just incredible. Yeah. I do hope those swallows don't get too sad when they find they can't get in. Hopefully they'll enjoy their, their new little fake swallow nests that I'm gonna put in for them outside. More stapling, putting all the net in. Oh, the chicken wire. Some nice cinematic footage, courtesy of Aiden here. On the iPhone, pretty good. The new iPhone, I should add. A uh, big improvement. There's my boot. There's my hair. Yeah. There is a bird-proof hole. Okay, that's another dramatic shot up to the roof through the hatch. That is some kind of rat fluff toy artifact. There's Lewis desperately trying to book a uh, ticket home out of the <laughs> out of the freezing cold wilderness. So while Aidan and Lewis carried on beautifully cleaning and hoovering the barns, I went over and uh, fixed a few gaps in the gatehouse because also we're going to be working in the gatehouse and we don't want holes, we don't want birds in there just now. 
or kind of ever really, but we do want lots of birds around, so that's why we're building bird boxes. I hope that's clear that I don't hate birds, I just won't be able to do anything to the buildings if there's birds inside. So, In the kitchen block there were a few uh, missing window panes. So I drew some kind of weird indecipherable hieroglyphics on a little scrap of card and uh, found an old bit of masonite which I cut into the right shape and put in the window pane. This is me measuring, some more measuring. My head really looks like a kind of trussed up Christmas ham or something. Hmm. Not very ladylike. There we go, sawing, jigsaw. Not sponsored by Nikita, this video, but it could be. I would be happy for it to be. I like Nikita, if you're listening. There you go, look at that, beautiful. First time. Yeah, there's my little mallet. Tap it in. All right. So then I wedged in some stiff pieces of, I think it's some old door frame, architrave that I found. And uh, there you go. So there was a kind of flapping piece of glass on one of the windows. I wedged that in with another little bit of door frame. And then the windows above didn't have any latches on. So I just put a bit of wire around and secured it to that piece of wood, which will hopefully stop that window flapping about and letting birds in. I was quite pleased with this method, which I developed uh, and kept refining, as you'll see on the next window there. See, I used a little bit of the uh, Twins playpen remains and I didn't even need any screws or anything. Just wedged it in, wire around, and then just nicely tie it up there. Look at that. All right, you can see what a beautiful day it was. It was really magic. Starting to warm up. There was a little hole at the bottom of the door. I don't think the birds are gonna fly in through that hole, but you never know. Thought I might as well block it up. A bit of plywood. Screwed it in with my impact driver, which I also love very much because it makes life very easy and fast. Also made by Makita. Okay, and then outside of that barn, there were these vent holes, which I guess were originally just to let air circulate when the cows were in there. A house martin nest. Again, we're gonna try and get some fake house martin nests, which maybe they will like. It's really cool that there's so many birds around and honestly, the birds you see out in the fields, there's like red kites and all kinds of stuff. It's really, it's amazing. A little bird's nest there in the vents. So I found this old uh, stash of uh, fiberglass insulation, which is just the devil's stuff, but I think it's gonna be quite effective at stopping the birds getting in. It didn't stop the rats living in there in the gatehouse, which I couldn't believe when we were in there. You'll see on another video, clearly there's been rats or mice just living their entire lives in fiberglass, which doesn't sound that much fun. So yeah, working my way around the building, blocking up those little holes. walked around the other side and carried on. That lake there, by the way, isn't supposed to be there. That's just, that's just some winter rainwater, but it looks cool. I kind of wish it was always there. That's not our field either, by the way. There you go, stuffed it in very neatly. Right, so then the bird boxes 
We had all of this stuff, which was bits of cow bed and bits of vent from the hayloft. And um, yeah, so we built one each and it was, uh, I felt quite honored when Lewis told me this was kind of the first thing he ever built, which I think is amazing because it looked really good at the end. And um, yeah, it was, it was really cool to be able to help him with that. Cutting the front there with a nice angle, screwing it in. the back. All right. Making a nice hole for the birds to get in. Kind of wasn't sure whether there's a, a good size for the bird hole because I guess you don't want big birds being able to get in there and steal eggs and stuff right so anyway I found out what was a good, good size hole and that's what we went for. Sanded it down with my uh, cordless Makita palm sander, rotary, what are they called? Random orbital sander, yeah, very good. Jesus, it looks like a Makita catalogue, that bench. There you go, screwing on the roof. There's a little hole in the back there to hang it on, you see? And there we go, little perches on the front to help the birds climb in. I think they're really fine. Very proud of those. So this was the last morning just before we were leaving for the ferry and we uh, went out into the hurricane. It was like super windy that day. But we hung the bird boxes on the walls outside, one in the front and one in the back one facing east, one facing west. Apparently you shouldn't have them facing south because the birds can just cook inside. So anyway, yeah, we had one facing east, one facing west. Should be good. And here's a nice dramatic shot. The end of the big barn, which is gonna be the recording studio and ceramics workshop and all that stuff. bird box right on the end and there we go yes no crooked I went back up and fixed it all right there we go. So yeah, that was us bird proofing the barns, making some bird boxes, getting everything ready so that we can work on the roofs. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I will see you next time. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, you can check out Lewis's work and Aiden's work. I'm going to put links in the, uh, in the description below. Um, yeah. Lots of love to you and uh, take care and I'll see you next time.